Very good. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm just going to introduce myself first, play a little bit about my project. Hopefully some of you are doing similar projects or you want to start similar projects. Uh, I'd be really interested in that and finding out feedback from you in terms of what you've learned. I hope to share what I've learned in my experience and um, maybe motivate some of you to try similar things from you know, the location wherever you happen to be. Uh, first of all, a little bit of background about myself. Uh, for the past five years, I've, I'm a publish, publisher and editor of a magazine. Uh, this is only available in Canada, but I, I have had some subscriptions from the States. It's a photo ed magazine. It's photo ed, the ed stands for education. Uh, so when I started this magazine, I thought it was important for people to get an education in photography. So it really addresses the issue about knowledge, information, how do I get educated, and how do I get motivated and inspired by photography. We do not do any equipment reviews. So if you want to find out what the latest camera is, this is the wrong place to look. It's basically on personalities, art, artwork, uh, we feature artists. Because my feeling in photography is if you really want to get motivated, you've got to see what other people are doing. And you get motivated by the product, the images they produce. Um, so for example, this is when we did an abstract issue. And we featured an artist. We talk about, we interview the artist, find out what their special interest is. Here's a, a, a section on uh, somebody who does uh, uh, smoke photography. So all these images are images of smoke uh, that, he, that he has done. Uh, this is a person on abstract, uh, some more abstracts. And then we have a section at the back for submissions by our readers. So that's basically the magazine. We try to pick on themes, and I found it very successful to really concentrate on a theme, and the whole issue is on that theme. This particular issue is on abstract photography. So as opposed to other photo magazines that might say, we're doing two pages in abstract, we're doing two pages on travel, we're doing two pages on bird photography, whatever. We do a whole issue on a particular theme. So this is the one on abstract, which is the current issue that we have. I ran an issue three years ago. Some of you might even have a copy of this. It's the, a 3D issue. And uh, this is 2003 winter. It's sold out. Uh, recently I saw somebody on eBay listed it, got 30 bucks for it. So, and it's the whole issue is on 3D. So, and it treats, gives the treatment from the very beginning, you know, Stereo 101, questions you want to ask. It has artists working there. Uh, one of the persons that we featured in this issue, uh, and it comes with the glasses. There's the glasses inside there as well. Uh, one of the people that we featured is Simon Bell. So there's his work here. Uh, some of his work you'll see on display in the gallery. Um, there's another, this is a very effective one where the cigar comes out of the window. And you show this to small kids and they're all grabbing. They're going to grab a cigar and things like that. Um, so it was an extremely successful issue. As I say, we sold out. So the good news is we're doing a second edition of Stereo. And it'll be winter of 2007. And um, if any of you saw the presentation by Chris Schneiberger, he's going to be also a featured artist in that. So that you can order uh, ahead of time simply by going to the web page. Um, and if you have my email address there, it's the same thing. It's uh, photoed, uh, www.photoed.ca. And you can download a, a form for that. Uh, the um, other thing that I'm currently doing is publisher. Uh, we had success with this. It's called the Guide to Photography. And it basically is for beginners, or even advanced people. And what this does is it starts up with the history of photography uh, from the very beginning uh, to, um, to present day with digital. It has a section on the tools of photography. And the tools are varied. Could be a film camera, could be a scanner. And I even have a pinhole camera you can make yourself. That's also a tool. Because we have a section here how to make your own pinhole camera. Some of you might want to try pinhole stereo. What does the camera cost to make? Pennies. Pennies. I, I'm, no, no more to be than 25 cents to build your two cameras, pinhole cameras. Uh, we have a section on controls, exposure. This is never going to change. I don't care if you got digital, whatever, or super duper new theory, that is never going to change. 
So we have section on exposure, the section on uh, the histogram. Somebody was asking earlier about what is a histogram. This explains it all visually what it is. Uh, section on depth of field, aperture, what that does. Composition is never going to change. Okay, it goes back to the very beginning of time and, and with artwork, rule of thirds, etc. Samples of, uh, of uh, images that, uh, you know, that display the, the terms. We have a section on safety, section on the traditional doctrine. Uh, believe it or not, there are people now I'm finding the response that I have from people that have been doing digital for years. They want to try film photography. And they're just new to it. And they say, where do I start? Where do I, you know, what does enlarger look like? So this is actually opening up a new discovery for people that have been doing digital for years who want to try film. Okay. Um, I recently sold a few cameras on eBay, film cameras, and people are buying them because they say, I'd like to try film. Uh, a section of photograms, how to make a print, how to make enlargement. And then we go to the digital area. And this, I should mention before, this issue is from 2005. I had printed 5,000 of these, and I thought, that will last three years. And then after three years, we'll do another issue. Well, it sold out in about a year and a half. So they're all gone. I have no more of these except what I brought here. Um, the, new, the new edition of this is going to be out when I get back home. It's, we're ready almost to send it to the printer. It's going to be 128 pages. It's going to have an expanded section on digital, and it'll have the very latest CS3 and Lightroom. I don't know, are you familiar with Lightroom? Everyone should get it. It's really the new workflow environment for a photography and photography and computer. So all of the samples will be with Lightroom. How to do scanning, uh, how to do archiving your work, uh, how to make tonal corrections, uh, how to convert to black and white. Then we have a section on special creative ideas. Because you've got the tools, you've got the equipment, you know the technique, you know the theory. How, what are some ideas I can try? So here's some on caricature. Uh, here's one of multiple exposures. There were some samples we saw in earlier presentations on how to do multiple exposures. Uh, the sample that I tried to indicate on here is it's not a new idea. There's a person doing it here, and this photograph here is from uh, circa 1895, doing multiple exposures. This is way before Photoshop, and they were doing multiple exposures. So the idea, we have modern tools, but the idea is there. Here's another sample of uh, uh, how, how we can change some things with Photoshop. Before it was done with trick photography, maybe using strings or whatever and modern way with Photoshop is much easier to do. Different looking exercises. Uh, Simon Bell had an article this one here on, on look, how to look different. Uh, sports. Uh, this is a section on uh, multiple, uh, sort of the, uh, uh, yeah, how to make a mosaic uh, with it. Uh, here's a beautiful example of, uh, of a mosaic with, uh, it really has to be well planned, but it's an exciting results you can get. The 35 millimeter film, you plan your exposure so that when you put them all together, you will have the portrait mosaic. How to build a pinhole camera. There is a section on sanotype, and there's a section on stereo photography, because a lot of people have never started stereo, so this is what do I need? Make your own slide bar. How do, how do you make an analog? It's right here. So that's a little bit about what I do. Uh, What's the name of that again? Guide? It's Photo Ed Guide to Photography. And again, on the website, you can order the new edition. This is sold out. But the new edition will be, it's, it's uh, I don't know if it, the web page mentions US correct, but it's $14.95 for the magazine. Um, a lot of times the reason we're not in the States is for mailing is when somebody wants to buy this, this magazine here, it's $5. For me to mail it to you, it's five bucks. Jeez. <laughs> that's, that's a ridiculous post office. It's, you know, I, there's nothing I can do about that. You know. I try to bring these in sometimes when I come to the conventions. And at the convention next year, I will have the stereo edition which is coming out in winter, and then we'll also have the photo and guide photography at the next year's convention, and there will be no shipping charge at all you can buy, even at a reduced price at the convention. So if you want to wait till next year, they'll all be there. Are you talking about the Rain Rapids? Convention? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And I'm within driving distance there, so I can bring lots of material. You know, you can, that's, that's the best, best probably place. But if you want to bring it in that, you can pay for the shipping. Okay, a little bit about my project, and, um, 
you, some of you may have had a chance to see the exhibit on the, on the floor there. Um, there are 15 images there. Um, so far, I've shot about close to 2,000 photographs. Um, what you're going to see this morning is not all 2,000. You're going to see about 65 of them. The ones that you see in the gallery are also included here. They've just been even you know, curated down to the size of the size that I can show in the gallery. Um, at the end of my project, I hope to have about anywhere from maybe eight to 10,000 photographs, and there will be a book coming out, out of that will be also on the stereo. And that's about a year or two years away, uh, but that's the plan, okay? Now, let me tell you, let me backtrack a little bit and say, how did this get started and what happened, okay? This photograph here, I have to credit with one of the reasons why I decided to do this project. And I'll tell you as I go through it, a little bit of the background of the area that I'm really documenting. It's a geographical area in Toronto, it's it has particular boundaries, so it makes it easy for me to say, do I photograph this or do I photograph that? I simply look at the boundary. If it's in the boundary, it's photographed. I've had a lot of requests, oh, you should photograph this. So where is it? I'm not interested, you know. It might be nice, but unless you set yourself your boundaries, you're going to find the thing becomes unmanageable. So pick a specific topic, and this topic is called West Toronto Junction. Now, this particular photograph here, there's something very peculiar about it. Um, something that, I've, that struck me is very unique. And um, what's unique about this photograph? And you have to think outside the box for this one, so I'm going to ask you this question if anybody can, can answer. Think outside the box. What's unique about this photograph? Yes. Is the guy smoking it? That's interesting composition, yes, that's good, but I'm, I'm thinking, you're, you're looking at the box. I want you to look outside the box. Well, I see a reflection. Uh, you're, still, you're looking at the image. Don't look at the image. Don't think outside the box. What's peculiar about this photograph? It might be a trick question. You're looking at the photograph. It's a trick question. Okay, it is a trick question. <laughs> yes. But it survived after all these years and it wasn't a famous subject. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Exactly, that's what struck me. I said, we've got this photograph. It's here. How come? Why do we have this photograph? That's not a trick question. Why do we have that photograph? Somebody else is watching. Something here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Somebody took this photograph in 1920. Okay? That struck me right away. So this, is in, this is interesting. What are we going to have 80 years from now for 2007? You're Exactly. Well, who's photographing today? Nobody is. So that's what I'm going to do. So I set it myself to say, here's my, here's my philosophy. This really motivated me to it. It's a photograph of Ted McGillivray, the young fellow chap there in 1920. He donated this photograph to the archives. Uh, our, I, I belong to a historical group. He donated this photograph. And it's a photograph of him and his dad, 1920, standing in front of their family store and family residence. So it's all documented as far as what the address is, the time, he said it was circa 1920, you could tell it from his age. And it's in the archives of an important, important historical photo. So what I want to do with my project is I want to photograph this area today, in 2007, so that 50 years from now, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, whatever, they're going to have this record of what that area was like in 2007. What's particular about 1920? Nothing. What's particular about it? Somebody thought about photographing it, and then we have a record of it. So we should have a record of 1920. We should have a record of 1921, 22, 23. We should have a continuous record. We don't. So I said about doing this. Then the other thing that I did was in the in the organization we have some very knowledgeable and uh, people that lived in the area for a long time. In fact, one of our members is 95 years old, sharp as a tack, remembers everything. And we have other members there that have been in the area for a long time. The area was a very a very successful area. At one point, they had five cinemas. Uh, they're all gone now, there's nothing there left of that. Um, I'm sure they must have had a lot of photographers in the area. And I've asked to, I've advertised, I've asked everyone, are there any stereo cards of the area? 
Not one. Not one has surfaced. So I said, okay, who's going to do it? I'm, I'm going to do it. You always get the idea to say, gee, I wish somebody would do that. It's not going to get it done. But if you say to yourself, I'm going to do it, it'll get done. So I have a set of, of images that is on display, but I also have been converting each one of them. I'm doing the work anyway to shoot in stereo. I might as well make some stereo cards. So I have a set of stereo cards that I make of all of those, and they're on display as well in the stereo card exhibit. And the stereo card exhibit, the stereo card form, I have a box set, and my daughter does a little bit of bookbinding, we did a book, a book set. So this opens up like this, and there's your, there are your cards right there. And it comes with little, little, those little folding viewers. And there, there's this, I call my, my book set. And I found that I've been very successful with that. And I also have a gallery in Toronto that's representing me. They prefer the book set as opposed to the prints. Because the problem is, with the, with the print, you're going to buy one of these prints like this and be $400. But for $1,000, you for the $250, you get a book set. So people are thinking, they said, well, gee, I can have all 15 views in a unique format, stereo card, which is really a novelty. A lot of people, what's a stereo card? What is it? You know? um, and they can have all images. So this has been, has been very successful with this. And uh, of course, the gallery sells for much more. So, but, it, but people are buying that. Then, to begin with, when I was telling people about my project, uh, the historical side said, well, why don't you come and give a talk at, at our monthly meetings that we had? And this is not a problem. So um, one of the papers found out that I was going to give a talk on that topic, and they said, we'd like to interview you. Sure. So the photographer came over, and this is another tip I'm going to give you. If you're going to get the newspapers involved in any project you do, prepare ahead of time a CD of images. The newspapers in the business are printing material. Any material they have to get is going to cost them money. If you give them a CD already of the images you've already done, it's like free for them. They're going to love you. They're going to say, gee, what? It's already made. I can just print it. It costs them nothing at all. So I gave them a CD of about 80 or so images. One of them was, and by the way, the images do not make them stereo images. Make them just regular. They will not print stereo images because people cannot view them. So make them regular 2D images. And one of them that I did was a panoramic of the area. It's this one right here. So you can see with the spread they gave is almost a full page coverage. And um, as a result, when I gave that talk, the place was standing room only. Like it was just packed. People had seen the newspaper article, decided to come about it. They knew it was going to be a 3D presentation, which you're going to see today. And uh, the paper really brought them in. It also brought a lot of people out of the woodwork in, in the sense that people were calling me and said, oh, I used to live so and so. Um, I'm 82 years old right now. I can give you information on um, the building that's being torn down. So, oh, that's interesting. Is, you know, it's a motorcycle shop. Oh, no, 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 it's not a motorcycle shop. It was a bowling alley before. I said, well, how do you know that? I worked there. I had, I had the concession. You know, my dad had a concession. We had, there's a bowling alley in the basement. But before that was even a theater. This is all information that I'm gathering to put together uh, in, in, you know, to, to, make, to make the story for the area. And uh, that's another topic I should mention. If you're going to do this, please bring a pen and paper or a recording device along because the photograph by itself, if you have a photograph, unless there's a date on there and a location, it is worthless. I've talked to a lot of people that run organized archives. They get tons and tons of photographs every year, donated them, so here's a photograph. It could be a very important photograph, but if there's no date and there's no location given, they just throw it out. It is useless to them. So record the names, record the location. Uh, the date on the digital is, is really easy. It's recorded, it's stamped right on when you take it. So that's, that's been a big help. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of my equipment and then we're going to run into, we're going to look at some slides. If there are any questions, by the way, just feel free to, to ask. Uh, you know, and if you've, if you've had experience with doing something like this, I could also learn from you. Um, would you approach a newspaper and say, look, I'm doing this documentary on such and such a town. Are you interested? Um, would you kind of wait? I, I would approach them. In my situation, they approached me. Yeah, they said, we understand that you're giving me a talk. You know, because what happens in some, in some newspapers, you see, they have to fill the newspaper saying, what's happening today? Or like, what's going on this week? Oh, yeah. 
They, and, and sometimes we'll print that for free. So if you were to call them and say, by the way, I'm, I'm giving a talk. If, you, if you're just saying, sometimes if you're saying I'm doing a project, uh, the project does not have a date specific and location to it, but if you say I'm giving a talk at the local library on this topic, they will print it because people in the neighborhood might be interested. Yeah, if you just issue a, a press release, which you can do yeah. some software program or like Word, I think they have a yeah. press release oh, for yeah. it. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah. See, papers will pick this up. Exactly. They, exactly. To fill they have to fill, you have to remember the way newspapers work. They have to fill that space. Mm -hmm. They cannot sell you newspaper with some blank pages. Yeah. So if you provide material for them, they're going to love you. Yeah. When's that event again? What time is it? Where's the location? What print? And then, depending on the coverage they give you, you're going to get, of course, people coming to that and the, the, the interest bills and so on. Okay? Um, this is a, why it originally started as a, as a small project. It's grown and grown and grown. Yes, question. Um, so one of the advantages of doing a very good press release is that it is a technical aspect. Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, one, one advantage about doing a press release like that is that if there's some technical details that need to be got right, yes. you can make sure they're written down right at least at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's true. You mentioned about technical details about a press release, make sure you're doing, uh, you're doing properly. Uh, and as the other thing I mentioned again, I'll repeat again, have the images ready. Have the images ready because they, they want to print the newspaper. Um, if you look at any newspaper today, uh, nobody today has seen a newspaper without any images. It just does not happen anymore. But if you look back in the early days, that before they had printing of capability for photographs, that's all newspaper was just text. So today you have to have images there. Question? Now, publish the uh, book. And the book format you have there on the table yeah. is very highly desired by bookstores that can stock They can stock it, yeah, absolutely. It makes and a nice gift. Format. It makes a nice gift, too, yeah. And what I do with this here is I, I shop around the used bookstores and I, I buy my shelf, my, my shelf, or usually I pay two bucks for the shelf, and then I just oh. cut, cut out the inside. Yeah, it's much easier than starting from scratch. If you have to make the cardboard ends and the piece and everything and buy the little ribbon there, uh, it's going to take you much longer. Mm -hmm. So I usually buy, buy the book that has about 400 pages. That's when I know what I need. Uh, anything less than 360 or so will not work. Uh, if you go to about 800 pages, it's too, too thick. So I know what I want. I know the size that I want because it has to hold the stereo card. And uh, sometimes people in the bookstore say, oh, oh, look at this title. I'm not interested in the title. I just want to know the shape of the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Dollar stores and 99 cent stores, a lot of times they'll have these returns or a bunch yeah. of shot and uh, they're new books. They're, new, they're brand new, yeah, they're brand new. They even come with a fly cover and everything like that. It's just, it's amazing. And I just, you know, I, and I glue the, end, the ends here together. It, it's, uh, it, it takes, it is labor intensive. I recover the, 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 the thing. The, my daughter has done a debossing here so we can put a title inside there. Like gesso? Uh, yeah, yeah, just on the outside. So this is solid. And it only opens on one side only, to so this side is see. You can have a closer look later. Yeah. Can you talk about the viewer that accompanies that? Sorry. You said there's a viewer that There's a viewer, yeah. The ones that I've been seeing, they sell them here. It's the, the, the ones that when you press oh, down, they, yeah, they're a couple of dollars each, so it's not expensive to include in this. Um, have so, you got the hole? Um, just exactly like, you know, I have a template that I use, I know the measurements, and I do I start from one end, then I start the other end, and, and even then, if you're done carefully, you'll need exactly. Or you can try all the way through, but it's, uh, it takes, you know, you do about 10 pages at a time, you know, you can't cut them all at once, you know, but eventually you get there and you clean it up. And because you have the lining on the inside, it doesn't have to be, oh, the inside is lined. So, right. so if you're off a little bit, it's not going to be, it's not going to be nervous, yeah. It, it really makes a nice presentation. Okay, so, um, my equipment. Uh, this is something that I, I've used. I, as far as equipment, I've used everything. I've used the uh, L'Oreal, some of the images here are shot with this, with the L'Oreal attack on the digital. Uh, a large image I'm going to see of a building that's standing, sort of floating in there, was done with a Hasselblad, uh, using a single Hasselblad with, uh, with a, the slide bar. Um, this is my latest equipment I'm using now, is a, is a twin canvas with the, uh, the Lang Shepard uh, controller. Uh, and what I'm finding is, in terms of equipment, you cannot just use one camera only. It's, it's sort of like you have to have a variety of cameras. I find it depending on the situation. This one works really well because I'm finding that I, when you have your camera, if I walk around with a camera like this, 
Okay, I'm walking around, because I'm shooting photographs of people. This, they're going to notice this. They're going to ask questions. Who are you? What are you doing? This type of thing. But I don't walk around with a camera on my neck. When I'm working, my camera's like this. Okay, so you're not looking there. If anything, you're looking at my name, name badge, you're looking at my eyes, you, know, you don't even see the camera. So I can approach somebody, I can talk to somebody, hi, how are you doing, how long you been here, uh, what are you up to, you know, how long you've worked here in this business, and then the people will chat. And then after they feel comfortable with it, and just say, do you mind, I'm doing a special project, I happen to have a camera with me, which they haven't, and I would bring it up. So can I take some photographs of you? And I've already explained what I'm doing, you know what it's about, usually they say, sure, go ahead. And I always mention to them, I'm going to give you free copies of the print. I only give them four by six. I don't give them the large ones like this. They're just four by six prints. And they love that. They say, oh, I'm going to free. They've, they've never been photographed. A lot of times, all these people that you're going to see here have never been photographed. So, so, so you're asking for their name address or something? Have everything. You get all that. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely essential. Yeah. Now, I get that after. Do you get a release form? Yes, I do. It's a good question. Yeah. I get a release form when I give them a copy of the photograph. And my release form says, in consideration for the prints that I have received, I hereby have a, they, they sign it in the do you, do you have any trouble with them getting back to you with that release? I mean, uh, saying? Well, I mean, you're sending them with the prints, right? No, I, I bring them to the prints. Oh, you bring well, them? Well, I personally bring them. I send them back again. I don't have any have to, Remember, it's all within my area that I live in, right? Oh, okay. So I'm photographing the area. So, and most of the times, um, when I give them the prints, they, they send me a thank you letter. You know, thanks so much for including me in your gallery. We're thrilled to be in. So when I hear words like we're thrilled, I know there's not going to be a problem with, by the way, we're going to sue you. <laughs> it doesn't happen, right? So they, they, they really, they're really happy to be in there. And the, the one, one occasion in a, in a wire factory, I mentioned to the owner, I said, oh, by the way, I'd like to photograph in this area here. And he said, well, you know, he says, my employees there, I have to ask them first. I says, fine, just see, find out. So a few minutes later, he comes back and says, uh, I talked to all my employees. Um, they would love to be in the shoot, but they want to be photographed next to their machine. Like, they, that's a sense of pride for them, where they work. And I says, lovely, not a problem. Huh? So, you know, I did a shoot. I went, in the shoot, I would do maybe about 100, 150 photographs. From that, I would select maybe the best six or eight. I don't give them all the prints. I don't give them everything I shoot. You know, some of them don't work out. Only the best ones. So maybe about, a, about half a dozen or a dozen prints I give, I give back to them. And each person has a record of it. And on the back of the print, there's my, my contact information. Um, so that if they want to contact me for more copies or whatever, they can do that. And then they, they sign the release form. And you're just happy as can be. Like they, they, the, the general situation is they are happy to be photographed. They welcome it. Um, and because you're doing a project, I also have been able to get into locations where other photographers cannot. Um, I did a special situation in Toronto where there was a mosque, a Tibetan mosque, and they were having a special ceremony. And I walk in with this, you know, but then all of a sudden, well, you, you can't photograph here. You know, there's this uh, private temple. And I said, well, I'm doing a project for it. Oh, that's the, but I said, come with me. I said, <laughs> so it's, uh, so the door's open. And I was free to photograph everything that happened during that time. Other people saw me photograph and they went to go like this and saw the person said, no, you can't photograph here. He's, he's the press. You know? So you will get special treatment as long as you tell people that what the project is. Okay, so communication is a big, it's a big thing. So this is the camera here. So let's go quickly. What does your release look like? Is it oh. one of those things that says, uh, you can do anything to the picture? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It starts off by saying, you, you, I just downloaded from the internet. Okay. But, and I changed the wording because uh, uh, the wording said, in consideration for X dollars, I, I don't pay dollars. <laughs> so I changed that to say, in consideration for prints received. See, so there has to be consideration for a legal matter. They give you this, you give them that. They can't just say, I release everything, period. You, you get released to propriety? Everything. They sign up everything. Yeah. Web, print, gallery, books. They sign everything up. And most of the time, you know, they don't even read it. Yeah. But I, I explained to them what they're signing up. So you can shake their head and put it on the nude and anything. Yeah. Technical. I can do it. Uh, yeah. If I own it. Right. They, okay. Yeah. And, but as I mentioned, the, 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 the copyright 
the, the copyright, that's a whole issue. Uh, by the way, the next issue of the magazine we're doing is on documentary photography. And it's going to have a certain section on, on copyright and photographers' uh, rights. And what I find with, with photography is, if you're truthful to the people, they will give you all the problems at all. Like if I say to somebody, this is a photograph of you in front of your store, uh, and uh, I'm going to be running it in my gallery, or in a print, or in a book, to show the document of the area, nobody has a problem with that. But if I were to run that and say, here, is, is it an article on, on child abuse? You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to come back and say, wait a minute, I don't abuse my son. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a problem. As long as you're truthful to what the purpose of the photograph is, uh, they, they will love it. Okay, let's go, let's, um, now I don't know how to, oh, by the way, I'm going to mention one other thing. When you have two cameras together, you're always going to have a problem with uh, towing in. So I carry this with me here, and I just simply put it on here like this, and I make sure the lens is lined up. Yeah. It works, works like charm. Okay, you're going to need your, I won't be able to see from here, you're going to need your, these are all antidotes, so you're going to need your, your glasses. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, here's what it looks like today on the interior. Uh, 
the main FOIA has been saved. So this becomes now historical importance to the community to so say this was, was there before. Uh, the community, as I mentioned, is, is going undergoing rapid change. Um, I'm sure a lot of communities anywhere in, in the world, the same thing is happening. So it's not particular to, to this area. Um, there are, you know, buildings are coming down, new buildings are going out, things are changing. So this is what I would really want to document. There's a new restaurant opened up in the area. These are the owners of the restaurant. So I'm doing a whole series on them. The restaurant is just a unique lighting situation. They have one whole, almost the whole front of the building is just glass. So there's lots of light I get in there. I can photograph easily. And I'm finding that it's a particular restaurant that it attracts a certain clientele that is amenable to being photographed. I've had no problem at all. Everyone there that I go there, if they're in that restaurant and I ask them, do you mind if I photograph it? They all, almost everyone says yes, no problem. Um, I've been to other restaurants, but not the case. If they're more private, here they happen to be, maybe it's a personality they attract. And this is the family that I photograph at the restaurant. Uh, again, they get a free copy, free print of this, so they love it. You know, they say, gee, great. We've got a print copy of us going up for Sunday brunch. And uh, it, it uh, records, again, the, 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 the people in the area. I'm, I'm imagining now there's two young children that are there. Uh, 80 years from now, 100 years from now, that's going to be something something important. And I have their names, the location, the, the, the date, and the list, everything. Do you give them a 3D print? Uh, four by six only. Right. Yeah, I give them a 3D print, and I give them also regular print. Uh, but only four by six. If they want, yeah. if they want larger, yeah. they have it. You throw them at their organic or glasses? The glasses, the glasses too, yeah. And I give the glasses are, you know. Uh, when I make my 3D issue, I usually order, like, the uh, next issue we're doing, we're printing 6,000 copies. So I order 6,500. Uh, here's a building that's no longer there. Uh, when I left for the convention here, it was completely raised to the ground. Uh, when I get back home, I'm sure there'll be a 10-story condominium. So it's, there's a dramatic change happening in the area. Uh, and this it's, is what I'd like to report. <coughs> Oops. One there, anyway. uh, there's a building that was torn down just recently. It's, uh, and again, there's going to be a new building going up there. So again, I have a location was there before and what's going to be there in the future. Um, street vendor, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, people set up little things similar to what's happening here uh, at the market. Um, so usually this particular shot here, I, the, my camera was at my side. From the other side of the desk you couldn't see it at all. I started chatting and talking for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I said, you know, I really love your glasses. They're, they're quite unique. I'd like to photograph you with the glasses on. Do you mind? Not a problem. You know, can I get a copy? Oh, absolutely. I can give you a copy of the print. And he's there every Saturday, so I know where he is. Okay. Um, and I had some occasion where somebody I photographed on the street, I just stopped him and photographed him and I said, you know, uh, I'd like to get a print to you. What's your name? Oh, I'm not living in somewhere right now. Who's at home? You know, like it's first street. What's your phone number? Forget phone number. They don't have a phone. They don't have a phone. So then we arrive at a common place. Well, do you know the pizza place? Oh yeah, I go there all the time for pizza. Great. I'm gonna leave my prints there with him. And they and and by the way, when you pick up your prints, there'll be a release form there. Just make sure you sign them. And they say, that's fine, we can do that. There's the building that was that you saw was rubble right now. He had been there for like 20, 30 years, and then all of a sudden next day he says, I've sold the building. You go back the next week and the building's gone. It's rubble. So I have a record of what was there before. This is a wire company. So I started chatting with them. I actually had to order some, a wire screen. When I went there, I said, well, how long have you been here? Oh, we've been here 40 years. Said, wow, that's amazing. And he showed me around. He says, yeah, I even have a photograph of the building with uh, one of the old cars sitting in front. And uh, I said, gee, I'd really love that for our society. Get a copy of it. You know, it wasn't in 3D. No, oh, not a problem. Oh, here, take this. And then, uh, then I started asking him, I said, do you mind if I photograph inside the building? And he says, not a problem at all. So, you know, you find people are really welcoming if you tell them what you're doing because don't forget, you're doing something for the community. So they're going to they're gonna be very welcoming to that and they're going to be uh, helping you as much as they can. And there's what the front of the, the company looks like. It's an industrial area. This whole area of Toronto was industrial, commercial. It was basically like another city. So when they amalgamated with the city of Toronto, it was sort of like... Um, 
it became one larger city. And that's happening all over the world. And you have smaller communities and helping with bigger, with another community, making a bigger community. And uh, this is one of the workers there. And if you want to be photographed next to this machine, so it's a terrific kind of problem. And uh, it was a really nice experience. They, they all get copies out of this. So this is something they've never had. When you think about it, this person would be working there 20 years. And he goes home, he works, you know, whatever. And he said, you got any pictures of you at work? You know, who would think to take a camera there? They won't have time. So I did a real service for that. This is another gentleman I stopped one evening. It was about quarter to five. I knew they closed the shop at five o'clock. And uh, the, I knew they weren't going to get any more business. So they were just hanging around outside at the garage. And I started chatting. He's from South America. You know, came here about 20 years ago. I asked him, how did you learn your trade? Well, my dad is a mechanic. I, I, I apprenticed under him. And, uh, you know, we've been here all these years and so on. And, uh, the fellow next to him in the back at first was a little bit hesitant. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to be photographed. That's fine. You know. So I just shot the owner. And within less than three minutes, he says, OK, I'll be in your picture. <laughs> so, you know, nobody wants to be left out, right? So as soon as they see some action going on, they want to be part of it. So he posed there. That was the original pose that he had. So this year, so I want you to stand. Then we got a little bit more, doing a little bit more work. You almost have to gauge how comfortable they are with it. You know, you're going to reach a certain point where you've not lasted your welcome. You've got to feel that. You've got to move on. Um, I was there shooting about 15 minutes, and uh, I did lots of locations. And once they've got you committed to doing a photograph here, then I said, oh, there's a better spot here. Let's go here. They'll move with you. Okay. So here he is at the shop. The, the tools, everything you see there is almost like a movie set. I couldn't believe it. This is amazing. This is just, you know, I want to photograph the way it is. Uh, here's the owner sitting there and uh, starts joking around. And, oh, by the way, I told him I was going to give a presentation. Oh, by the way, I says, make sure you tell him the, the woman at the back is my wife. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, it was sort of this kind of you know, this, this conversation. And, and you know, you, you really get to know people, you almost become friends with them, and, and they recognize you. And, you visit them back again, they're all in the community. So to me, these are the people that are salt of the earth. They're, you know, they're not presidents, they're not executives. They are the people that do the work every day, in and out for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, I really want to showcase their, the, the work they do and the professions they have. We also want to document some of the buildings in the area. So we, we, you know, I, I try to go around. One of the areas of the community is going to be uh, uh, homes of the area to document what they what they look like. This is a restored home. Uh, initially, this home was uh, was sort of run down and abandoned. Nobody knows it. Oh, who wants to buy that property? Uh, well, an engineer bought it, and boy, he must have spent a million dollars converting it. But it looks like the real showpiece right now. And there's another home in the area. So we're documenting, the, the society, by the way, every year has a, a home tour that they sell tickets for. And I'm their official photographer for that. So I get to go around every fall and uh, I photograph the homes in 2D. But I also, I said, well, I'm going to do the job anyway. Right, so I'll bring the 3D camera. So all the homes have been photographed in 3D uh, for my own purposes. And again, for this documentary, the work will work in really well. Here's the entrance to the home. Uh, interiors of churches. Uh, some of these churches are in the house, in the home tours as well. <coughs> Documenting the, you know, the, the, the furnishings inside the home, the architectural detail of the home. Uh, and I have the addresses, you know, the, to document where these places all are. <coughs> now you get permission here as well? It, it's a house tour. Ah. So yeah, so and, and I'm the official photographer for the group. So I get to go into these homes even before the whole tour opens up, and um, you know have have a sort of special time. Um, I have been. There was one home person uh, was particularly sensitive, and they said I would prefer not to be in the. You can photograph the outside, but I prefer not, not to take any photographs inside. And I said that's fine. You just you won't be in the book. Yeah, so. They, you know, they said it's fine. So it's sort of like, works both ways. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. So 
more homes. Uh, people, ordinary people. This one was particularly seen. I was on my way to work and I see these people walking the dogs and I screech to a halt. Oh, I got a house pitch. So I walk up to them and I, you know, again, I just explain it very quick. I said, oh, do you mind? I just really love the, the setup that we have here with these dogs. And uh, they all start lining up in a row. They're like facing me. I said, no, 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 no. Back, back. This is 3D. So give me some distance separation between you. And they all, you know, they, they were very, again, very happy to be, be part of it. Um, this is a cheese company that I visited. Um, again, they've been there over 40 years. Um, they have run competitions with uh, cheese factories in Italy and they have beaten them. So it's one of the little gems that people hear about. It, it, it's sort of word of mouth. Um, and still people are discovering to this day, oh, I never knew they were there, where are they? And it's not like on a main street, it's a factual factory, so you have to know where it is uh, to go there. So I got permission from the owner to photograph inside the factory. And he says, no problem, this, here's the time you come with this, we're having a lot of activity. And, uh, you know, I, I put on a smock and everything, make sure that everything is, is perfectly okay. And I got to photograph inside the factory. Again, I gave him prints, copies of that. Uh, in a sense, I'm promoting his business. So when I have my display, uh, my display would say, this is the International Cheese Company. It's on Mulock Avenue. And he loved it. So it's, that's, like, that's like free advertising. So why wouldn't he want me in there? Um, this is what, you know, what the building looks like. You can see that it's not in a, in a it's in more an industrial residential area, uh, mixed use area. Uh, so somebody, unless they know about it, would not find it. This is inside the Maiden Ricotta. Uh, every day, around from 8 to about 11 o'clock each day, they, 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 they make hundreds and hundreds of these ricottas. And boy, it's delicious. It's the best taste of anywhere. Here they're making bocconcini, that little machine that turns out to be for sort of uh, small you know, golf ball size bocconcini. Here they're stirring the, the ricotta. And this is one of my classic poses in terms of her skimming the, the top of, the, of these large mats of ricotta. Then I photograph, uh, I have a plan to photograph, there's a, there's a business area that has a lot of commercial uh, storefronts. And I have, I have lined up all, I'd like to do all the businesses in the area. So they, I approach the uh, uh, business improvement area. I also approached the local counselor uh, to tell him what I'm doing. And he was thrilled, as well, this is great, the area needs promotion. You know, it's, uh, so we're undergoing change, so what you're doing is terrific. So he's invited me to all the functions that he has to try to promote the area. And then I become the official photographer for that. And because the business people know about me, uh, when I go to photograph in their stores, they've already seen me. And I almost line them up. You know, I've got, uh, when I go back, I've got a shoe store to do, I've got a dance hall to do, a judo uh, a studio to photograph, uh, uh, there's a restaurant uh, that I'm going to photograph. So these people have uh, pretty well, I line them up furniture refinishing place, and uh, because I'm promoting that area, they, 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 they really, you know, they, they, they welcome me uh, into, their, into their store. And then some, you know, I'd like to also do some ordinary scenes, like typical scenes around the area. Um, they're more like a fine art type thing. They don't show people, but I feel it's important to showcase what happens in terms of different seasons. Uh, so you have a local area where kids can go to bogging. So um, you know, as soon as we get the first snowflake, everybody comes out. They just bought new toboggans like halfway the year, and it's it's almost like a feast day. And here's the situation again. It's a group shot. I'm not particularly focusing on one, but the people in the foreground, I know who they are, and uh, I've given them a free copy of the print, and they there's no problem with publishing the print as part of it. This is a local BIA, Business Improvement Agency, the owner for the, they are the person who organizes that. So I've gotten to know them quite well.
this is a gentleman that was in the shoot, and if you see the magazine here, uh, the photographer from the newspaper wanted to photograph me at the intersection. So we were there that morning photographing me with my camera and sort of posing for the camera. And all of a sudden, this gentleman walks by, waiting for the bus. And as he walks by us, the photographer from the, from the newspaper says, well, a cool outfit. And uh, nothing happened much in the next five minutes, but his bus hasn't arrived. And then he motions to me and says, uh, you know, like, with gestures, uh, take a picture of me. And I said, wow, that's an invitation I couldn't resist. So I started photographing, and as I was photographing, the reporter from the Star from the newspaper was photographing me. So they, he got a wonderful photograph of this, and he printed it. And uh, the other thing, suggestions that I have is always have a business card handy. Because what was happening, I only had like two minutes to photograph this. And the bus comes, and he starts running to catch his bus, and I'm chasing after him. I said, wait, wait, here's my card. So I gave him my card, and that was the end of that. I had no name, I had no address, nothing. We didn't have time. The bus came. But, you know, about four or five days later, he, he emails him. He says, oh, you remember me? You took a picture of me. I said, what? That's beautiful. Because now I got his email address. And I says, yes, I'd like to meet you. And he says, actually, he says, no, I'd like to, you, you, it's amazing what you've done for me. Um, uh, that the fact that I got in the paper, everybody has been calling me and so on, I'd like to thank you and, and buy you lunch. You know, can we meet? You know, and, and he lives in the area, so you know, it's not going to have to go very far. So he says, sure, let's we'll meet for a coffee. So we go for a coffee. I meet him. The release form comes out. We get copies of the prints. Everybody's happy. And I, just, I, I enjoy meeting people, so I start talking. I said, what's your story? He says, well, his English is very broken. He says, I'm I've only been in the country um, like about a couple of weeks. I'm a refugee from Kosovo. I had to flee the country. I'm a writer. I'm an actor. I'm a publisher. He showed me books that he's written, gave me copies of them. I, I couldn't understand the language, but he, he wanted me to have copies of the autograph by him. And uh, he says I'm an artist. And uh, it's just like a wonderful personality in terms of his background. And uh, he was thrilled again to be part of the part of the exhibit. He came to the opening night. Everybody, you know, was recognizing and greeting him. He became a celebrity, so he thanked him a lot for that. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it, it's really. And uh, while I was in the another little story, while I was in the coffee house where uh, we were chatting, I made sure I picked a location with by the window. And I took some more portraits of him because you can see he's a very distinguished gentleman. So I've got some really nice portraits of him. They're beautiful portraits. Uh, and uh, the owner of the restaurant comes by and says, uh, Oh, I know that you're a photographer. I just received this uh, flower arrangement. It was huge. It's like, you know, about four feet high. It was a gigantic. And I says, Could you do me a favor and photograph for me? And I says, Not a problem. So I, I photographed the flower arrangement. And uh, she starts going towards the till and says, how much do I owe you? And I said, well, you don't owe me anything. Oh, no, no, I'm going to pay you. I said, no. I said, no, I'd be glad to give you a four by six print. There's no charge. You know, I'll get it printed up and I'll bring it back to you in a couple of days. And he says, well, thank you so much. That's great. So that was the end of that. About 20 minutes later, we're ready to leave the restaurant. So uh, Batir, this gentleman's name, um, goes to pay for the coffee and says, how much do I owe you? The lady says, I'm not taking any money, no charge. <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, no, why don't you the coffee? No, no charge. I'm not taking any money. So it's sort of like it goes around, comes around. So the people are going to be really, you know, they're really very genuine and, and, and um, it's really touching. It's really, yeah, but I would recommend strongly and if you want to try a documentary project, you will be moved by the experience, believe me. There's a group of girls that I found out. There's a restaurant there that's uh, up and coming there. It's called Cool Hand of the Girl. And I saw their, they were inside the restaurant. And their bikes were outside. And I could see from their bikes and their, you know, their gear, these, these were into, they're serious cyclists. They're not, they're not amateur cyclists. They were pretty serious about it. So they had coffee and everything, and we were having coffee. You know. And then they get up to leave. And I followed them right away. I said, okay, there's a chance. So as they were, putting their gear together and getting their helmet on. I said, do you mind if I photograph here? And they, again, they, they said, no problem. What do you want us to do? So I got this shot. I got a few other shots of them, one that's in the exhibit. And uh, again, what happened was here that they, I gave them my card, but they didn't get a chance. They were off before you know it, they were gone. 
So they call me up again, they email me again. In fact, actually, the husband of one of the girls emailed me and says, you know, it's your birthday coming up, I'd like to surprise you by giving a print that you took. You know, can you send me a print? And I said, I can do better than that. I sent you the whole file. So if you wanted to blow it up to love my 14, that's not a problem. I sent this the three, the, the 2D. So he sent me back, I gave me copies of the 4x6 in, in stereo. I got the email I got from them were just, they were, I mean, they were so happy. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, for taking photographs of us. Thank you so much for including us in the exhibit. It was, I mean, they were, they were really happy. Uh, and this is a photograph of them that I took. It's actually posed, I told them, they did it several times, you know. But the, the reason I want them in this location here, the mural that's, that's being, um, on the building there is being demolished. And that, that building had been there, the business had been there for 98 years. Uh -huh. um, and well, you know, people in the area were thinking, what happened? Like it was a motorcycle shop, 98 years and then it's gone. And we don't know the full story, but the next thing is, that building is, and the mural is gone. Like it's just raised to the ground, it's never coming back. And uh, what's being planned, there's a 10-story condominium high rise. It's gonna be in that same location. So I can go back now in a couple of months, whenever the building's finished, and take the same shot, showing the new, showing the old, showing the new it becomes an historical significance. And this is the interior of a local library. Again, it's very difficult to shoot there, uh, but if you set it up and you ask permission, uh, they went out of their way. I even asked them, I said, by the way, do you have a ladder? Yeah, we've got a ladder here. So they, they even provide a ladder for me. They wanted to get the angle to show the, the fixtures that are there. Uh, this is a Carnegie Library. It's donated by money by Carnegie to produce to to build this library. Some of the unique homes that are in the area. You want to make sure you document them. There's another shot of the building that's being demolished. It was a few few weeks before. Okay, so it's just a shame. It's almost a historical building, but again, you know, progress, things move, things move forward. And there's what it looks like at a certain point. We have a lot of garage sales, lawn sales, typical things happen in the community. So I try to photograph those. And I'm trying to indicate, sort of really get a picture of everything that happens in 2007 or thereabouts, you know, within a bracket of about a couple of years. Uh, this is the St. Patrick's Day uh, ceremony. And uh, when I approached the, uh, the pastor of this church, I, I told him what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I said, I'd like to photograph, and preferably I'd like to photograph when there are people in the church um, to show that it's not empty building. And uh, he volunteers, oh, why don't you come this Sunday? We have St. Patrick's Day. The place will be packed. The bishop will be there, and so on, and so on. And so on. I said, terrific. That's great. And then you look deeper into the history, and it turns out, uh, that this area of Toronto, when we had a lot of Irish immigrants, they settled in this area of Toronto. And they, when they have, they have St. Patrick's Day ceremony each year, everybody comes out and packs the place. And this is sort of tradition that's been going on for the early pioneers in the area. So it was a very um, timely occasion to photograph this event and to record it uh, in terms of what happens in this area. And this is a, another gentleman I met, it's Taylor Shoes. And uh, when I asked him how long you've been here, he says, I bought this store from Sid Taylor, June 20th, 1966. He knew the exact date. Uh, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, he's been very helpful. Uh, and uh, it's one of these stores in the area that's almost like a museum. You've got to see it to believe it. Outside is pretty, nothing's changed much. Uh, and inside, uh, well, I'm blank from Donald, we're talking about very quickly. Uh, this is what the store looks like. Now, the, all the shoes are in boxes on the side of the, of the wall. This is the way they used to have in the, in the early days, I guess. You don't see shoe stores like this anymore. Uh, even though the area now is sort of a little bit of decline in a sense, but he says he has 
customers from all over the area, all over the province, all over the city. People come. Remember, he's been there from, he bought the store in, in June the 6th, uh, June the 20th, 1966, but the store's been there from the 1920s. And there are stores that have been there longer than that. Okay, that's what it looks like. I would hate to lose this. It's a real treasure in terms of, uh, you know, if, if you had a, if somebody was making movies in the 1920s or so on, and wanted a location that's already set the way it looked like 1920s, this would be the place. They wouldn't have to change anything. And so that's how the shoe stores look. This is a, the, the reason for the name Junction is that it's the area where four railroads crossed. And that's why the area developed the importance the import that it has. If one railroad had to carry their freight to another railroad, they can only transfer the, 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 the material at the junction where the trucks met. And this is the place. So the railroad is a very important aspect of the community. You cannot do the community without making mention of the railroad. So again, I got permission with, with the uh, railroad yard. Uh, at one point, they used to employ over a thousand people in the area. They had to build buildings for the homes for the workers. Now, of course, with the automation, everything is reduced quite a bit. Uh, so I visited the site where these all these uh, all these uh, trains come together, and there was one track there. The people are very proud. One of the gentlemen I met, you know, I told him, "Well, you got the best job in the world." Yeah, I love it. He says, "I get to go on a train to go across Canada, uh, all over North America on these trains, and I just love it." He says, "And you see that track over there? Yeah, I see it. Every train that goes to west of here has to pass by that track. Every train." still to this day. So any train coming from Montreal has to go to Vancouver, or any points west has to pass by that spot. So it's really, you know, of importance. Um, I got, then I was hired and said, you know, I'm in the cabin, can you arrange? Oh, no problem, you can arrange. So you, you get special treatment when you talk to people what you're doing. Um, the, uh, and then, you know, to get this close to the train, the only place you, other place you can do it is go where there's a, a crossing. And I started photographing that crossing. I also like to photograph where they're parked so that I can have time to set up my shot. Uh, when you go to where there's a crossing, uh, you only have a few seconds because the train's moving by. And I've discovered a few places in there where there's crossing. And when I found a photograph there, you meet the regulars, the train photographers. And here's what. It's always the same people, and they, they just, <laughs> and I'm talking serious train photographers. They got their shortwave walkie-talkie with them, and they're hearing all the conversations, and get ready, there's a train coming this track. You know, they, they know already what's happening, because they hear all the conversation that, they, that the conductors, that the engineers have. So I got to know them quite a bit, uh, you know, and, uh, and sometimes if I don't have my son, I'll walk by, and it's anything happening, oh, yeah, there's a train coming pretty soon. You know, so I get my camera ready and I'm, I'm set to go. Here's something. And this particular gentleman here, they were fixing some tracks and I just happened to walk by and again you just start the conversation and say, you know, do you mind if I, if I follow you? Not at all. So they're very helpful. There's a great transportation hub in the area, so we have a lot of commuter trains go by. restaurant. Uh, this particular restaurant here is celebrating 50 years. Uh, it's a pizzeria. So we went to photograph there. Where it's a regular it's a community restaurant. You sort of frequent these places so you know them. They know you. And uh, I give them free copy of the friends. They love it. Uh, here's what it looks like. You know, so they have a record of what the, what, the, what the dining hall looks like. And I think this is a the last shot, and at this point in the presentation, I usually said, let's call out for pizza, <laughs> and then have a celebration, and we, we enjoy it. So, uh, thank you very much. If there are any questions? Uh